Hey, it's Mr. W from sciencemusicvideos.com. This hormone, epinephrine, can make your pupils dilate, it can make your heart race, and it can get your liver to convert its stores of glycogen into glucose as part of the fight or flight response. How does it work? We're gonna look at that today. Get ready to do some Takey Bio Review. Before I start with today's FRQ, I wanted to let you know that between now and the AP Bio exam on May 18th, I'll do a live lesson on YouTube every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. We'll practice writing FRQs, we'll do some music, and you can ask me questions. It's going to be a great time. Invite your friends. You can write your responses to this FRQ and any other FRQ in your Biomania FRQ practice journal. The link is below. It's also available on my website. There's a schedule on top that takes you through what you should be practicing every week. You're going to do some reading on the screen. And so what I want to encourage you to do is go to sciencemusicvideos.com, go to the live question of the day link, and there you can see these questions in an easier to read format. Okay, so what I want you to do to start is read the question and think about the answer. If you wanna go ahead and give it a try, go ahead and do that right now. In a moment, I'll walk you through it. Let's start with the first part of this question where you're asked to identify which model, S or T, best corresponds to the mechanism of epinephrine. I want you to fill in the blanks for this question. Epinephrine is, is it either polar or nonpolar, and how do you know? Okay, epinephrine is polar. And the way that you know that is because if you look at the molecule, you can see all of these polar functional groups that are hanging off the outside. You don't really need to know the names of those functional groups, but you should be able to recognize that an OH is gonna be polar and that's changing the chemistry of this molecule in such a way so that it'll have the properties of a polar molecule. It'll dissolve in water, it'll be hydrophilic. Now, because it's polar, epinephrine blank diffused through the cell membrane, think about what word would make sense to go into that blank. The answer is can't. Because it's polar, epinephrine can't diffuse through the cell membrane. And that's because of the basic property that like dissolves in like. The membrane of the cell is nonpolar on the inside and it won't allow polar molecules to pass through it. Finally, which diagram is showing a ligand, something that binds with something else, that isn't diffusing through the membranes? It's T. T is showing a molecule that's docking with a membrane receptor. So, which model best corresponds to the mechanism of epinephrine? It would be model T on the right. Now, let's move on to the second part of this question. Epinephrine has effects throughout the body, but some tissues are not affected. Explain how that could be. Think about it, I'll give you the answer in a moment. Epinephrine in Model T binds with a membrane. What word would go there? Epinephrine binds with a membrane receptor. Now let's think about this next bullet point. The shape of that receptor is blank to the shape of the hormone. The answer is one of my favorite words in biology. It's the term complementary. So, Complementary means things that fit together. And let's think about three similar systems. Enzymes are complementary to what? Adenine is complementary to what? Codon is complementary to what? Fill in those three answers and I'll show you that in a minute. Enzymes are complementary to substrates. Adenine is complementary to thymine. Codons are complementary to anticodons. So to pull this all together, that hormone, epinephrine, does indeed go throughout the body. Hormones are released in glands, they go into the bloodstream, and they go everywhere. But they only affect cells with a blank receptor. And the word that goes in there is complementary. They're only going to affect cells with a complementary receptor. Okay, now part three. There are two models here that represent hormone action. Which one of those, S or T, would bring about longer lasting effects. And you're gonna be asked to justify your response. So let's compare these two models. Which model is changing cytoplasmic enzymes and which model is changing gene expression? Think about that for a minute. You can see the answer in the diagrams. Take a look, put the answer down. 
Model T is based on changing enzymes that are already present in the cell, ready to be activated. In this case, there's probably some second messenger system that's going to activate those enzymes by getting a message that'll go from the membrane receptor into the cytoplasm, activating those enzymes, bringing about an effect. If you've studied epinephrine's action, you know that it's connected to a G protein coupled receptor and a second messenger like cyclic AMP that's going to be connected to a signal transduction system and that's going to cause that effect. Now what I want you to think about is which model is changing gene expression and in this case it's model S and what you can see is that the hormone actually goes through the membrane and will bind with a receptor. That receptor is going to carry that hormone receptor complex into the nucleus. It'll interact with DNA and it'll turn on genes. All right, now let's look at which model is the one that's used by steroid hormones and what's the evidence for that. Think about that for a moment. Okay, we have to remember a little bit of biochemistry. Steroids are lipids. Like dissolves like. So steroid hormones are able to diffuse through the membrane and enter into the cytoplasm where they bind with the cytoplasmic receptor. And the evidence for that is the fact that this hormone is actually diffusing through the membrane, which is what you'd expect from a lipid steroid hormone. Now, connect this to what you should know about hormone and hormone action. Think about steroid hormones and their effects upon the cell. Now, let's think of two examples estrogen and testosterone. Estrogen is the feminizing hormone. Testosterone is the masculinizing hormone. You guys have recently been through puberty and during that period, these hormones went throughout your body and generated all of the secondary sexual characteristics that made you into biological men or biological women. It's about these hormones and those changes, of course, are lifelong. Those changes affect your body in a permanent way and that's what steroid hormones do. The other kinds of hormones, which are the water-soluble ones, are much more connected to quick cytoplasmic responses. So for example, when epinephrine binds with a receptor, you can have immediate responses like, for example, the mobilization of glycogen into glucose so that you can have a very quick response that's part of, for example, the fight or flight response. I want to emphasize that you can do this. I know that the conditions for this year's studying for the AP exam are really tough. We're all under stay-at-home orders for this pandemic. But if you practice every day using biomania, using the resources your teacher is providing for you, using the resources on the College Board's website, you can get yourself to the level that you want to be at. You can get to that four or five. Keep practicing. Use the College Board questions, use the questions on Biomania, which you can get on my website or you can get at the app. Practicing a little bit every day is going to give you the mastery that you're going to need for the performance that you're going to want. So what I want you to do right now is go to sciencemusicvideos.com. I want you to remember that every Tuesday, every Thursday between now and the AP exam, I'm going to be doing live review sessions on YouTube. You can join me there. I'll do reviews just like this one. And I want to emphasize that this kind of practice you should be doing every day for a half an hour, for an hour, every single day. And what you need to do that is you need access to lots of questions and you can get them through the Biomania AP Bio review system that you can get on sciencemusicvideos.com or you can get as a downloaded app for Apple or Android. So I hope to see you at my next live review session. I hope you keep on practicing, keep on working. You're gonna to get to where you want. I believe in you and I'll see you at the next video. C double L M B R A N E control and transport selective permeability phospholipids, carbohydrates, proteins, and cholesterol, a fluid mosaic by layer in a salt. So let's